What's going on guys? Welcome back to the yard. Got a number of things to get through today, so let's get right into it. The first being, I re-watched the last couple videos and realized how annoying it is when I'm walking around in the yard while filming. It's very dizzying, so in this video, I'm gonna not do that. So, the first thing I wanted to show you, and I am gonna walk just a little bit ahead here to show you this, but I've got a few different situations happening in the yard right now, and I wanna kinda tell you why these things might be and what we're gonna do about it. So, one that you're looking at here, right here, this is not sunlight coming through on the lawn, this is fully shaded at the moment. And what I've got is a large light green patch right here in particular. That's the largest one. There's a few others here you can see just kind of scattered around with the nice dark green color. I've also got this light green. And what that can be is a number of things, but the two that I'm focusing on are my iron content in the soil. And I haven't done any soil probing to know for sure, but other than melorganite, I haven't put down much of an iron product, and melorganite's main function is nitrogen um, application, or main benefit. Uh, and so I'm pretty confident, without doing a soil test, to know for sure that what this light green is, is actually a lack of iron. And so what the iron is, is going to give you the greening effect in your lawn. And you can see that because I've got a lack here, I don't have quite the greening effect that the rest of the lawn has. And so one thing we're going to do today is put down a product called Ironite, which has a higher... I don't have a bag of melorganite to compare, and I didn't look it up before the video, but Ironite's main function, and it's only NPK analysis... Uh, is iron. It's one zero zero. Uh, or I take that back. Let's go take a look at it actually. I said I wasn't going to walk around, so I didn't. Uh, it is one zero zero, but let's take a look at the analysis here. So we do have um, our one percent nitrogen, which is pretty low, but then there we have our nine point nine percent iron, which is a ton. I wish I had a melorganite bag to compare with, um, but I, if I remember right, I think we're talking like three or four percent nitrogen in uh, melorganite, and maybe less than two percent iron, if that. Um, if you know differently or have a, a bag with you, you'll have to let me know in the comments if that's true. But anyway, this is a 5,000 square foot bag. And I figure my front lawn is uh, closer to half that. I think it's two to 2,500 square feet. And so that's what we're going to shoot for, using about half the bag. So the next thing that I wanted to discuss today is my new spreader that I picked up. We recently had uh, sort of a citywide cleanup. And sure enough, across the street, this spreader popped up. And so I'd actually been shopping for a while for a spreader and I was about to pull the trigger on the uh, Scott's Elite dual um, rotor spreader. I found one used for a pretty good deal and thought about it, but then this showed up across the street and I thought that's just too good to throw away and I like old stuff anyway. So this is kind of your classic bucket style broadcast spreader. You can see it's gotten a, a good amount of use over the years. It's pretty rusty down in there. So, what we're going to do, and it does spin and everything and operate, and the little slider works. What we're going to do is just take a little bit of uh, WD-40 here and try to get this on the door. Let me shut this so I can show you what I'm talking about. Try to get this on there and work it back and forth for a while and then i'm going to spray the whole thing out to make sure it's clean and we'll go ahead and get this filled up with some ironite product all right so here's about half the bag in the spreader they recommend um, anywhere from about a 2.75 to a 5 setting depending on your spreader brand my brand is not going to show up on the chart and so I just went with essentially closed right now, and then I've got it with the option to go up to a 5 using the handle here. So 
we'll just start walking and see how it goes. I'll get this done and then uh, move on to the next thing I wanted to mention. Okay, got the ironite down. Pretty sweet little spreader. I like it. Uh, I do need to um, tighten this down so that it stays where you have set it. Just kind of a, a friction deal there. That was the only problem that I really encountered. And I did apply more in that area. I went over that two extra times compared to the rest of the lawn. So, anyway, I'm not gonna walk around a whole lot, but I am gonna just give you a quick look at how things are looking now. There is just a little bit of sunlight peeking through. You can kind of see the shadow here. That's not light green patches. That's sunlight. That's a light green patch. So just to give you an idea, and we'll see in a couple weeks how that looks. But looking across here, you can see we've got our usual bald patch there where there used to be a tree. And we've got our new landscaping growing in. Pretty decent. The front part of the lawn, one of the biggest things I battled actually all over the place, but mainly in the front with the overseeding project was the helicopter seeds that fell like crazy. I can't remember, are those oak or maple? Uh, but anyway, those are all over. You can maybe see them. I'll zoom in here Covering all of that dirt right there. So any planting that I did right there uh, Whoops went a little too far any planting that I did right there uh, was immediately covered by those and so The grass couldn't get water and nutrients and if it did start to sprout up It was just squashed down by those and I couldn't do anything about it because they kept falling like crazy. And we're finally done with that. So that was one of the challenges of spring planting, which we knew was gonna be the case. Same thing kind of happened in here. We did really well right here, and then not so good up here. But you can see where those seeds fell. On the left side, they're pretty thick, and on the right side, they're not. And so that's okay. It was kind of an experiment. I did not use a whole lot of seed. I've still got a ton left. And so we'll save that for the fall to do a, a real good overseeding. And really, unless you're on top of it, and if you're looking at it from um, maybe driving by, let me walk back here and kind of show you. You can see that section, every time I point, it's gonna zoom. But you can see that back section really looks pretty good from the road. So I'm okay with that. Looking back on the north side here, from here looks really good. It is kind of patchy once you get on top of it, but that's a section that did really well with the overseeding. I think it had additional shade and that kind of helped and I paid attention to my watering and made sure to water that pretty well. I do struggle with watering here in the front and so I'm gonna focus on that in the fall more so I'm gonna hit this really hard with the uh, dethatch and aerate this fall and really try to renovate this front section. So anyway, one other thing I wanted to mention on today's video is something else I'm dealing with over here on the south side of the yard. And I've just started noticing this today. So I'll try to find a couple spots. Uh, there's one, kind of a little bit of a brown spot. There's one little brown spot. And some of that is not to be confused with uh, those dead helicopter seeds underneath the surface. There's kind of a brown spot. Um, and so walking around, you see these dark brown patches. It's not like a light brown patch like dead grass looks like, but it's a little bit of a darker brown. And my impression of what that is, is brown spot or brown patch. There's another one right there. And reason being that I'm dealing with that right now, there's a couple things that can cause that. One is too much nitrogen, which I highly doubt is the case. I've only put down melorganite, actually I think only the once in the video that you saw, which has been a month and a half or two months ago. So in my case, I highly doubt it's too much nitrogen. What makes a lot more sense is the other probable cause of brown patch, 
and that is high humidity, too much moisture, the grass isn't able to dry out, uh, and that can also cause problems with fungus and things like that. The reason that I'm leaning that direction is, for one thing, we're in like a 90 to 100% humidity right now. It's very hot. It did rain. Any rain that we've gotten is just kind of a drizzly rain or just a quick shot of rain. And so my impression there is that it's sitting on the grass then and not able to dry out. Uh, but also, when I go to the backyard, I've seen a couple mushrooms popping up in patches. And so it's ideal conditions for fungus and the brown patch that we're dealing with. So I'm not too concerned about that. There's not much you can do about it. Um, at least not in my case. I, you can go crazy and try to dry the lawn out and do things like that, add drying agents. Um, but in my case, I'm just relieved that it's not something I've done by putting down too much product to have that happen. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. And I'll let you know... Oh, forgot to mention, the Ironite does want you to water it in deeply, so they say. And so that's why I brought up the brown patch thing is I didn't really want to put more water on the lawn without the chance for it to dry out. Uh, but with the ironite in mind, I am going to take advantage of having that down. And I'm going to do about a 20 or 30 minute watering um, in the morning. I don't want to water tonight because the sun's about down and that's going to sit on the grass overnight. I'm not crazy about that idea, but... I will set my watering for the morning and uh, look forward to giving you an update uh, as soon as we start to see some results. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next video.